Did you know Wonderful Pistachios is a complete protein providing all nine essential amino acids? They are also one of the highest protein snack nuts. Each one ounce serving has six grams of complete protein, which is 12% of your recommended daily value. The best part is Wonderful Pistachios comes in a variety of flavors and sizes, and they are so delicious. They're perfect for enjoying with friends and family or taking with you on the go. Check out WonderfulPistachios.com to learn more. Welcome to the Mindset Mile podcast, the show that'll leave you empowered to take action towards becoming the turned up version of your already awesome self. I'm your host, Aisha Zaza, and I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Good morning, fam, and happy Monday. At least that's what time it is for me. This episode is brought to you by Upswing Fitness, the fitness app that'll be launching mid-October where I'll be hosting my workout programs. Super excited about that, so stay tuned for more info as that gets closer. Today, I want to talk about self-compassion as it's something I think so many of us struggle with, myself included. And I found this to be especially apparent during my first pregnancy in 2020, which those are obviously not my normal circumstances. And many things were at play that were working against me, like hormones and sleep deprivation. But I just had the hardest time not being able to overcome the way I felt so down so much of the time. And I would constantly beat myself up for not being able to do a fraction of what I was used to doing. I remember missing a really important appointment I had scheduled with a therapist because I just didn't double check the time. And I thought I was certain that I remembered the correct time, but there was this tiny feeling I ignored that was second guessing if I was right. It's hard to explain why I ignored it, but it made me realize that this is something I subconsciously do with sometimes big or important things. I'll sort of put it off or delay the action I need to take. And I felt so seen the other week when I was talking with a friend who articulated that she does a similar thing and gave the example of when she gets an email reply or a response via DM from a brand she wants to work with, she sometimes puts off opening the email or message. I had never heard anyone actually say that. And for as small and maybe silly of as an example as this might sound, I was like, oh my God, yes. Like, why is that a thing? It's not with everything, but why is it with something important, like an appointment I truly did not want to miss or an email that could potentially contain some very exciting news? Do we delay our response time in confirming the appointment time or opening the email? And from what I can identify, this is a degree of perfectionist tendencies and or a fear of failure. It's that avoidance we find ourselves doing with things that are important or we know that we need to do. So not doing it at all kind of makes us feel safeguarded from being wrong or let down. The worst part is knowing exactly when you're doing it, which is that tiny feeling I had that I was ignoring and I just hoped I was wrong. Like, what is the big deal in double checking what time the appointment was? It doesn't make sense. But I felt like I knew I was right. And double checking to see if I had already missed the time of my appointment felt so heavy and so disappointing to me at the time. I would have rather taken the chance that I was still right. But when I showed up to a locked office door and then went back to my email to check the appointment time only to confirm I was wrong, I felt absolutely crushed and so stupid. So stupid that I made such a big deal over this and missed an appointment I was so desperate to go to for help. And it sent me into a relentless spiral of shame. And as I'm giving this example out loud, it feels ridiculously silly, but if you know what I'm talking about, then you know. I got to my car bawling. I called my husband and then verbally lashed out to him about how stupid I was for missing this appointment and how I can't do anything right, that I was such an idiot and I deserved to miss it. 
And it went on and on and on. And it felt awful. I was literally saying these words about myself to him. And when I look at this scenario from a third party point of view, it's actually kind of mortifying. If I was ever consoling a friend who found themselves in this scenario, I would never tell them that they were such a stupid idiot and deserved to be wrong and that they aren't worth being helped because they can't do something as simple as double check their schedule. All this to say, most of the time, it is us that is the most harsh on ourselves. Hey guys, my sponsor Get The Tea has a unique selection of organic non-GMO supplements and teas made right here in the U.S. Their teas are for cleansing your gut in a very gentle yet effective way. They have formulated just the right blend of natural herbs that will clean your body and help keep your colon healthy. And they've given their website a makeover to make ordering a lot easier and user-friendly. For September, if you order the code ZAZA32, you'll receive a bottle of their Alley Beat supplement for $32. This product has stabilized allicin, beetroot powder, D3, zinc, and vitamin C. It's great for maintaining blood pressure and boosting your immune system. You can get it on sale during the month of September for $32 if you enter code ZAZA32. Go to getthetea.com. Being our own worst critic is damaging, it's hurtful, and when it goes unchecked for so long, it literally changes the trajectory of our lives, the decisions we make based on the belief we have of ourselves, and can feel impossible to undo. But good news is, it's not. It is a process, and I want to give you a few ways to help you start forgiving yourself and develop self-compassion, because the grudges you're holding against yourself for past mistakes or being the way you are is hurting every relationship you have, not just the one with yourself. First off, I want you to know that self-compassion will become a lot easier when you find yourself in a scenario where you actually need it, like the pickle I found myself in over this missed appointment, when it's something you practice when things are not going awry. You can practice self-compassion the same way you would practice positive affirmations. So whether you like to write them down, put them on sticky notes on your mirror, or say them out loud, self-compassion sounds like saying very simple things like this. I'm so proud of you for doing the work. I am doing my best, and that is good enough. I can do hard things. I've come such a long way. I am proud of myself. I am a work in progress. I am not my past or my mistakes, and I approve of myself as I am. These are just a few examples of what you can write or things you can say that will speak to your inner child. Secondly, forgive yourself for the things you're mad about, whether they're things you did, things you didn't do, your faults. I think many people struggle with the idea of forgiveness because they think it means that the behavior whether it's our own or someone else's, is excused or that we were being a pushover in some way. But I want to remind you that holding grudges hurts nobody but yourself, particularly when it's you that you need to let go of the grudge with, because that grudge comes along with a lot of shame and sometimes hate. And I don't know about you, but I've never been able to hate myself into a version I love. Forgiveness means you're not letting what happened in the past have control of you anymore. And once you realize you are in the driver's seat to change your habits and self-talk, it should hit you like a wave of relief. It honestly just feels so much lighter to know that truth. And this isn't something you just do once. You may need to forgive yourself daily as negative thoughts and familiar situations arise. But there is no limit to the amount of times you get to forgive yourself and choose to practice compassion instead. It's a process you'll find starts to become more natural the longer and more frequently you do it. And in case you need this reminder too, you deserve it. You deserve to not be shackled by the way you've always operated if it's not serving you. You deserve as many chances as it takes to make self-compassion a new normal. It doesn't mean old feelings won't come up but you don't have to live there. Accept them, acknowledge them, and keep moving. It's when we try to bury how we are feeling 
be it shame, doubt, fear, anxiety, that we become a ticking time bomb and explode on ourselves like I did when I got back to my car after being confronted with a locked office door. You are worth forgiving. You're worth being kind to, mostly and especially by you. I hope this episode spoke to you. Please send it to someone who might also need to hear this message. Share it on social media so other people can find the podcast and be sure to tag me so I can give you a virtual hug. I'm so proud of you for showing up for yourself today. I can't wait to see you next week. And until then, make it a great day.